Hey everyone, uh, welcome, welcome to this uh, new live stream, uh, first live stream of 2023. Uh, we're really excited to just continue to share uh, different ways to use Doubler to write your songs and come up with ideas that uh, you normally wouldn't come up with. And uh, we have an ex sorry. Yeah, we have a bit of an exciting one uh, planned for you guys today where we're gonna lay down some chords using Doubler uh, 2's chords tab and turn these into arpeggiated melodies using uh, an arpeggiator and other effects. Uh, and the tutorial is going to be, sorry, just, yeah. yeah, and the tutorial is gonna be uh, mainly in, uh, in, in Ableton. And uh, one reason we do a lot of our tutorials in Ableton is because uh, our Doubler Studio Kit, uh, Doubler 2 Studio Kit comes uh, with a free copy of Ableton Live Lite. And, but the techniques we're going to discuss, they can definitely be applied to whichever DAW you're working with. Uh, at the end of the day, Doubler is, all, is a MIDI controller and it sends MIDI, whether it be chords, bass, or any other types of melodies. And it's just the way you manipulate this and the way you use it to start your track or come up with different ideas and melodies uh, that really makes Doubler 2 special. So yeah, we'll jump in right away in Ableton. Uh, first, I'm just gonna quickly recap uh, what Doubler's chords mode is about. So what we first wanna do is lay down a chord progression with a pad instrument, and then we're gonna take the chord information and turn that into melodies using an arpeggiator, like I said before. And um, we have a pre-prepared drum beat here. And also, if anyone has any questions uh, during the live stream, I have the chat right here in front of me. Oh, and it's, I need to make it quiet, sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions during the live stream, uh, definitely uh, write in. We can take a pause and change the subject whenever, so please, um, I'm here to answer anyone's questions, of course. Uh, but I'm just gonna start with a quick drum beat and we're gonna lay down a pad now with some chords. So here's our beat that we have. So we have a very basic uh, breakbeat style thing going on. And now uh, I'm in Doubler. I'm actually just gonna turn on my cursor. So uh, yeah, now I'm in Doubler. And I first of all, before starting to write any chords, I wanna choose a scale. And today the, what, the track we're gonna be working on is in G minor. So I'm just gonna select the scale G minor. Uh, if you recall, Doubler also has a key tab here where you can sing in a melodic idea and it uh, suggests uh, various different scales for you. But usually go, if you're a beginner, going with a minor or major scale is much more helpful and makes things easier. So I'm just gonna go with a G minor right off the bat. And here's our pad instrument in Ableton. Yeah, what's really useful in Ableton and what we're gonna showcase a little bit today is these control dials that Ableton has. So this is just a preset in Ableton's um, pad instruments. So one of the pads that comes up here. Um, and what's really good about these instruments is that they have very simple controls here right off the bat ready to go for you to edit and change your sound. So let me just try singing something in this with chords disabled. So now if I head to the chords tab and enable chords, we have the triads preset selected, which is the most basic form of chords, the root note, the third and the fifth. And doublers, because we're working in a minor scale, Doubler already detects which note represents which chord, and you can also change these if you want. But we're gonna keep it simple for now. We're gonna work with triads. We're gonna keep the root note bass line, which is the root note we're singing one octave lower, basically. And let me try to sing some chords. <laughs> And again, I can change the characteristic of the instrument by messing with these control dials here. So 
so now I'm just going to record, uh, try to record a basic chord progression, and then we're going to go from there. So you get a bunch of different chord ideas. And this last, so this last progression sounded okay. I'm just gonna take that. So I can just, I'll just start looping that. And I'm just gonna make sure all the notes are hitting on the one so that we don't miss any MIDI. So it's really helpful that you just get all this information right in front of you. You can add different notes, delete notes, change the chords as you like, but normally it would take a lot of time to write this down. Or if you're not very familiar with music theory, it might take some even more time to get a progression, a smooth progression like this going. But doublers, scale presets, and the chord presets make it really easy to get a progression going. So when you in Ableton, when you select all notes, you can just select this legato here. That makes them go all the way to the end. And I'm just going to do something interesting. I'm just going to double all of these so I can click and drag, hold option on my keyboard and bring them up, duplicate them up an octave. So but we have some small error here. And some aren't hitting on the one. Just having some small difficulty here. Just gonna crop. Yeah, some of these notes aren't hitting on the one because I did something wrong. this chord progression uh, I'm gonna make it sound a bit nicer maybe lower the cutoff so now we have this progression we have these bass notes here and what can we use them for of course we can use them to lay down a quick bass line so I'm gonna hold option on my keyboard lower and copy this MIDI clip here to a sub bass instrument take out these high notes let's just listen to the bass Maybe you can lower it by one. Now with the pad. So now that we have that bass line, we can add a little bit. We're going to get to the ARPs, by the way. I know this uh, live stream's title was uh, cinematic, uh, <laughs> cinematic arpeggios, but we first have to lay, uh, lay down the chords and the bass line, and then uh, we're going to get there in a sec. So now we have that. And now, uh, with the bass and chords ready, I can duplicate this chord MIDI that I recorded with Doubler, and I can copy it up to the ARPs here. 
So we have a, re a basic retro lead uh, patch here. It's just uh, one of Ableton's uh, lead synth presets. And what happens is, again, you can use the controls. So the arpeggiator is, has a rate of 16th. This arpeggiator can be found in Ableton's MIDI effects section. And every, every DAW, Logic, FL, every single one will have an arpeggiator and they'll all come with pretty much the same parameters. For example, the step one that makes the notes go an octave higher than what's actually written in the MIDI. So here's without steps. <laughs> I'll add one one step so all the notes go one octave higher during the sequence. And let's listen to that with our pad again. So what some more important parameters uh, in the arpeggiator are gate. So that's how much of each individual note uh, the arpeggiator is letting through. So when I start to raise the gate and the notes are coming through fully, we start to get some wobbly glide effects. <laughs> So this pattern is pretty straightforward. It's a down and up, so every arpeggiator has various styles as well. Up is a common one. Uh, Diverge has some interesting sounds. So one thing, so this is a very easy way to make arpeggiated patterns, uh, just to take, to lay down a chord progression using doublers chords tab and then copy the MIDI to a lead and add a MIDI effect arpeggiator. But how can we make the arpeggiated pattern sound a bit more uh, interesting and like uh, less generic? One way to do that is to make the chords a little less predictable. So for example, we can, Maybe, um, just a moment, sorry. Yeah, uh, we can change the notes up a bit. So what I'm gonna do is solo this screen. Maybe lower the reverb a little bit. I'll lower this to C. Um, I had some ideas here, F A C. Oh, we can lower this to D. So I'm just basically changing around some notes so it's not the classic uh, triad patterns. And we're gonna get some more interesting melodies uh, once we do this. So for example, this note, I can add a C here. 
And yeah, you can add different variations. For example, there's a C here, and then there'll be a D here. So it's almost like two different kind of chords in one. And we're only using notes from the G minor scale. And Ableton actually has a control that allows you to just display the notes that are in the scale that can be useful if you're just starting out. And let me see, bringing this down maybe. <laughs> If we try a different pattern, maybe we're on diverge right now, maybe down and up. That's another one way to make ARPs more interesting, and so I'll just mess with this pattern. So now that we have that, I'll copy this MIDI that we recorded with Doubler 2 once more to this bell instrument here. And just you can explore with different lead sounds. We have a, another arpeggiator loaded onto this MIDI channel as well. And we have our eight effects of Ableton ready to go already just to morph the sound a little bit. So let's listen to this sound. With our straight beat, now we have a basic R pattern. I'll play the beat as well. So this sounds pretty straight, uh, and maybe um, one thing that we're going to look at in a sec is muting some of the arpeggiated notes so that the patterns are more interesting. But first I'm just going to switch up the rhythm. So this is a straight breakbeat rhythm we've been using. But if one thing that can make arps really interesting is adding swing to them, and some arpeggiators, like the one in Ableton, have a swing setting built in here. So I'm just going to copy everything we've done here. So I'm going to add this, turn this groove into a 16th note swung groove. So that's going to make like notes that are da 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 into da 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 kind of. something going like that and then what we can do is add some per percussion <laughs> One thing we can do is make the bass line more interesting. For example, in this other variation, 
we have just some fills going on here. And again, these are all notes in the scale of D minor, a uh, G minor, which we're working in, and you can experiment and change that. have that going and one one secret way to uh, really automate ARP melodies is by messing with this gate parameter and I'm actually gonna do it using doublers uh, MIDI CC messages so if you head to the assign tab here in doubler you can map uh, any parameter in Ableton or whichever DAW you're using to the vowel A ah, you sing the vowel E like A ah, E or ooh, and but my personal favorite is this env, which means the louder you're singing into the mic, the more uh, this parameter is increasing. So I'm not going to sing any notes or sing any chords or sing any bass lines. I'm simply going to use uh, this envelope parameter to modify this effect, and let's see if we can get any interesting melodies with it. So I hit Command M in Ableton. I'm gonna. Oh, that was supposed to be at the bells. So command M, the arpeggio gate. Sorry. So now you can see. So as I sing louder into the mic, I'm not singing a note again, as I said, I'm just using the loudness of my voice to control a parameter in Ableton. And yes, you can definitely, if you have like a MIDI controller and a knob on your keyboard, you can also definitely do that. Um, but this is just a new way to do these things and you might even get more expressive when using your voice instead of physical knobs and especially when you have all these four at the same time that you can map different parameters to it opens up a whole new world of uh, modulation and effects so I'm just gonna uh, try to record in some automation for this gate parameter again and maybe I'll put my previous ARP on as well here <laughs> Actually, no, I'll leave the bells for now. I'll add in some steps. I can also, let's try, uh, sorry. So what I can do is try modulating the pads cutoff with the aval, for example, in doubler. I'll do that. I'm not recording right now. I'm just exploring with different ideas. But if I was trying to lay down the framework for a whole track, what I do is I would be duplicating this pad, for example, seven times, and then just recording all my automation. Actually, why not just do that now, just with the drums? <laughs> just to show you so I'm gonna map I'm gonna map the filter cutoff to this a valve it's off right now so I'll hit the doubler command M cutoff and a this means that now as I sing yeah uh, yeah <laughs> this is where the funny sounds uh, I'm gonna make start guys sorry <laughs> uh, as I move uh, modulate this cutoff then uh, with the aval, I can just introduce a new character and a new kind of building aspect to my part. So, and you can also in doubler two, it's very handy. You can control how responsive that is. So you can set a lower limit for the cutoff. So I don't want the cutoff to ever go all the way down. So I'm leaving this out maximum at like 37. Maybe I don't.
don't want the cutoff to all go all the way up ever. That's too sharp, so I'm just going to bring this down. And at the left side here, you control sensitivity. So for the min, how much input do you need to get this bar to the very top? And for the max, um, it's the same thing. It just lowers the limit. And these new controls introduced with Doubler 2 really are a game changer uh, for modulation. So I'm gonna, just going to give this a quick try. I'll actually copy my baseline as well. Hit record. something like that. I think it was still going a bit too high, but what I can do is because all of the CC information is recorded, uh, I can use Ableton's control to just select it and remove and bring everything just a little bit down. So. pad full of character that's not just like one chord progression being like the the whole time it's actually changing modulating and these kinds of things can help you add interest to your song without adding more parts and parts and parts you can just with one chord progression and one piece of midi you can get to a bass line you can get to different arpeggio melodies uh, and other things so just going back to the arps now Copy that over again. Um, let me know if you get bored with this progression, by the way. I know we're continuously looping one chord progression and one uh, part over and over, but it's just kind of to show all the things you can do with just four recorded MIDI chords. And um, actually, just before continuing, I also want to talk about uh, Doubler's Chords tab a little bit more because we recorded a pretty, uh, we recorded using the triads. But what you can do is you can also choose more advanced chords. So for example, I'll, ch I'll take the chords from my progression, which was G minor, F major, uh, A sharp major, then C minor, and I'll try to add some more advanced chords for those. So G minor, I'll make um, maybe a G minor seven. Yeah, I'll just maybe mainly work for the A major. I can choose an A sharp, I can put a D-sharp major chord over it, for example, instead. So the root note will be A-sharp, but the chord on top will be D-sharp major. And you don't really need to know uh, theory while making these selections. It's all about experimentation and creativity and making different combinations. And this isn't a replacement for learning music theory, of course. We definitely encourage that you learn as much as you can, of course. But this is a tool to get these chords right on the screen and, and like allow you to start working on your track and your idea as soon as possible. So I'm just gonna, sorry, went on a bit there. So I'm gonna disable the A. So now we have that A sharp ready. We have G minor seven on the G. I'll put a C minor seven also for the C. And then maybe for the F, we can make an F major seven just to make it more interesting. Or maybe that won't work actually. Uh, we can keep it at F major actually. Yeah, we'll keep F major as is. Okay, so just slightly changing the chords and we'll also, the voicing style is cluster. So all the notes are kind of close to each other. But if we change this to spread. <laughs> Red mode has more notes over a wider uh, range of octaves, and we'll s we'll see that now when we uh, record the MIDI. So I'll just try with this preset, uh, with these chords now recording. And you remember, you can save your profile so you won't lose these chord configurations that you have. So for example, one day you sit down, you want to write an A section for your track, you lay that down the second day, you want to lay down a B section for your track, you'll still have these chords ready to go while trying to record your B section. So 
Let me try. I'll try singing the same uh, progression over the drum beat. when I was singing that A sharp we got a completely different feel because we used a D sharp major uh, chord on top of that so let's just see how the MIDI looks like so we can clean that up a bit by the way we have a very a very useful uh, MIDI capture uh, companion plugin uh, that we're also going to add chords clean up to soon the team is working pretty hard on that uh, I'll actually do a demonstration of a melody with the MIDI capture plugin in a moment I'm just gonna clean this chord MIDI up myself Because of the spread voice and we got a completely different style of chords, maybe it's a bit high so I might want to bring these down an octave. So it's almost like a B section to the track we had going. Again, just reminding this useful tip, you can select all notes, hit legato, and they'll all go till the end of the, um, the bar. But this one went a bit too much. when you have a different uh, shape of chord like this for example you see the notes are all very spread out from each other compared to our previous MIDI I'll just jump to that where you see the notes are all very very close to each other you'll get a completely different ARP uh, from this kind of MIDI as well so I'm just gonna copy this back to our ARP channel <laughs> cool trick with ARPS is when uh, there's a reverb or space control here what you can do is you can really increase the space and lower the cutoff and then it starts to create this ambience so for example
change this bass note. Maybe the D sharp will sound better. Yeah, so we raised the rate all the way to 128th notes. Uh, I don't know if anyone really works with that speed of note, but... <laughs> to our let's say that maybe this is a B section to our original which I think sounded a little bit more musical <laughs> thing while we have this uh, arpeggio going I'm just gonna go back to a uh, doubler to assign tab and see if I can assign three different parameters of the arp to a uh, e u and what kind of modulation and effects results will come so I'm just gonna copy this whole section here <laughs> that breakbeat now but so just gonna duplicate that over a couple times and now so I'm gonna come to this arp lead um, I'm gonna map the ARPS filter, um, unison control, so this is what the unison control does. Listen so. So yeah, I'll map to the cutoff, the unison, and the space. So just hitting Command M in Ableton. Just had to clear everything out there because I had mapped other stuff before. So now you can see when I move, when I do a uh, e u kind of sounds, the parameters are mess uh, are being modulated. I uh, u. I'm gonna actually maybe turn down my volume for. This. 
this Yeah, so basically, if I recorded that, I could then choose. Um, oh, get rid of this. If I recorded that, uh, I would be able to then choose different parts of it and just find maybe some really unique moments where the arps are changing, some reverbs coming in, then that's going away, then the cutoffs coming in, and then the um, and then the unison effect is also there. So you could just really develop a whole long sequence of arp automation and um, create a part of your track this way. So I'm also gonna just quickly show our MIDI capture plugin. Maybe I'll go back to the bell sound for a moment. So the MIDI capture plugin uh, that we introduced very recently, it allows you to just record uh, you record your MIDI and clean it up using this nice little plugin uh, that c immediately syncs to the Doubler 2 app, for example. To record, oh, I have to go to the play tab, of course. Yeah. So now all I have to do uh, is load this up onto an empty MIDI channel uh, in my DAW, not the MIDI channel of the instrument I'm going to record with. Sometimes some people think you just add it at the end of the instrument. No, it, it has its own MIDI channel, uh, but you still record arm your instrument. So for example, I have this lead here loaded up. I'm going to disable chords. <laughs> So I'm just going to add some space to that lower the So doubler MIDI capture is active here, ready to record. And then I have armed the MIDI instrument that I'm going to record a quick melody idea with. So um, all I have to do is enable recording. Now when I hit space bar, it's going to start recording. <laughs> Click spacebar, it stopped recording, and I can choose between the raw and clean uh, MIDI. Uh, apologies for my singing, by the way. Um, so I'm going to go with the clean version. I think I made some mistakes. That kind of quantizes it a little bit, gets rid of some ghost notes that sneak in, in there while you're adjusting your voice. Maybe you jump to different pitches and stuff. So it's really helpful, saves a lot of time in the cleanup. So I'm just going to add that here. <laughs> MIDI channel, so silly me. Sang it. So yeah, you, you might not get it right the first time. So that's a 
quick simple melody and again we can That's a quick way uh, you can use Doubler 2 to generate chords, generate MIDI, create bass lines from that MIDI, create arpeggio melody melodies from that MIDI, and just start to record automation uh, using Doubler's valves and CC dials, building up your track, building up effects uh, in a really, really new way that just hasn't existed before. So uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Um, Again, apologies uh, for some of my singing. <laughs> uh, someone in the comments is asking about different styles of chords, by the way. I just want to just reiterate that I was kind of using the more simple triads uh, in this tutorial, but we do have re a lot of different options for chords. And if you're more uh, familiar with theory or if you want to experiment with different chords, you can come in and choose, for example, the sus chords, sus two, sus four, seventh chords. And we do plan to introduce more and more chords uh, in future updates. These could be ninth chords, 11th, 13th. Uh, we're definitely uh, working on it. And this chords tab is only going to get more and more advanced. But what we just wanted to demonstrate is how fast you can start to develop a track once you can sing chords, sing full MIDI files like this instead of taking the time to write it down. Or even if, you, if you're if you slower with the music theory, like we said, this is a really fast way to start some songs. And the fact that you can extract bass lines from it, create melodies with arps, uh, etc. And also, like we did, improvise melodies, just shutting off the chords and just singing over the chords you recorded. Uh, using Doubler MIDI Capture or the Play tab. It's just a really new uh, frontier for music making, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, that live stream. Yeah. I'm just checking if there are any more questions. looks like it's okay so yeah Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, see you in the next live stream. Uh, we do these every month. And head to our website, uh, voclia.com, to learn more about Doubler 2, more about Voice to MIDI, and all the new things that we're working on. Um, Happy New Year again. Uh, see you soon.